A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Hey Vsauce! Um, fellow here. Good morning fellow non-woodworkers. Welcome back to another video. It's a maths video. Stay with me. And it's gonna be a real fun one. It's a little challenge for you. Doesn't matter if you're into higher mathematics. It's still gonna be a nice little challenge for you. So stay, stay tuned. Just keep watching the video until I propose the challenge to you and then try to figure it out. It's a very fun one. And today it's gonna be the first time we can actually record. We can record a video on my blackboard once again. I finally was able to completely install it in my new studio and I'm so fucking excited about that. So yeah, w watch the video. It's gonna be worth it. It's a cool little challenge. So we are in my workshop on purpose and you can see it's a total mess in here. I have too many projects at the moment going on and I just can't keep up and I just can't clean up the space. But this doesn't really matter for the video. Our video today is about a so-called drum sander. It's a thing that sends wood, so makes it smooth. You can also bring it down to a certain thickness using a cylinder basically which is spinning really really fast and mine is by Laguna and it's over there actually let me show you that's that little thing over there and with drum senders there actually comes a bit of a challenge if you are a non-mathematician or someone who's just not good at, at mathematics namely if you buy one you can choose to get yourself the sending belt which you can wrap around the machine. Um, you can buy it from, from, the, from the factory in and of itself, from the company which sells the machines, but they are extremely, extremely expensive because they are already cut to size. So what you do in a normal case is if you don't want to spend that much money, you are going to get yourself a very long sending band and you are going to cut it to size. But many woodworkers struggle with the fact that they have no idea what size they need to cut it into. Maybe they have thrown away their original belt and they have no idea what the measurements are going to be. And this is the challenge for today. Try to figure out what the length of the piece of sanding belt must be such that it wraps perfectly around the cylinder. I'm going to show you into the machine, tell you about a few specs and the given variables that we can plug in, the given numbers, and then you can figure it out on your own and then you can keep watching the video for the solution. And now over to the drum sander, shall we? Come on, follow me. You can't really follow me. Um, I need to track the camera with me. So this is just a little edit trick and now the camera is here. This right here is my Laguna 1632 drum sander. It's a very expensive machine, but it gets the job done really nicely. And for the past few projects, I was using the sanding belt and it's really roughed up. This is also one reason why I'm creating this video, because I need to change it. You see, it's, it's broken here. We got burn marks here and it's just locked up with, with sanding dust and the like. And the sanding belt I told you about is just rolled up on a big old roll and you can get one of those for like 50 bucks instead of um, 10 of those for like 500 bucks so yeah this is really cheap but you need to cut it to size so what we have given is basically just a just a width of the sending bell this is one of the given variables you can find the one for my measurements right here so you can later plug this in once you figure out the formula and then we also got the sending belt which originally wraps around the cylinder and if you take a look at the shape the shape might remind you of something and this is a little hint for solving the video. Let's zoom in a bit further. This might remind you of a toilet paper roll because they are designed in the same way. They are just a long belt of paper or cardboard which is going to be a um, connected into a cylinder. So this is kind of like a toilet paper roll. This is the only hint I'm really giving you. But we know something about the cylinder. Namely, you can get yourself a band measure, for example. And you can just measure, for example, what is the height of the cylinder or the, the width, you could say. It's um, 40 dot something. If we take a look into the specs of the machine, the accurate ones, it's going to tell you that it's 40 um, centimeters and six millimeters. So 406 millimeters in total long. And what we also know about the machine is the, 
the radius or the diameter, I should rather say, the diameter of the base, which, which is a circle, obviously, it's a cylinder. I can't really measure it nicely in here. But if we take a look at the measurements from the, um, from the specs on the machine, it's going to tell us that it's 12.7 centimeters, so 127 millimeters in total. And those are the given variables. So we have the width of our belt. We also have the width of our cylinder and the diameter of the cylinder. And now I want you guys to figure out how long this belt must be such that it wraps perfectly around this drum sender once. Try it out for yourself. And as mentioned before, when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. It's a fun challenge, so you should most definitely tune in. I'll see you in a second in my new studio. Oh, holy smokes, this is still all so pretty exciting to me. Um, please do ignore one or two things. Um, it's not completely done yet, so yeah. Um, this right here is missing um, underneath the trim and also those are not here yet. They need to go on top. But one after another, what we got now is the blackboard. I still need to get some other variables right, like the lighting. It's a bit annoying. I'm going to install a new light. It needs to be very bright because, well, everything is really, really dark and, it, and it's absorbing the light like crazy. Also, do you notice that I have painted the pillars of the chalkboard? Looks pretty fine in anthracite. So, um, yeah, let me drop this one. So, I've written out what we know. All the information that we talked about. Those were the two variables that were given by the description of the product and this right here is the width of the paper that I'm using at the moment, the sandpaper, hence WP, width of the paper. What I brought with me is um, on the one hand a toilet paper roll, at least an extended one. It's, it's a cylinder which is rolled up just like the thing on the drum sander and also I've gotten myself just piece of paper, which is also going to act as a cylinder, like this. And this is going to spark a few ideas. So we know a bunch of things about the cylinder. For example, we know what the width of the whole cylinder is. Um, we know this, this is the width of the drum, 406 millimeters. And what we also know is the diameter of the drum. Well, if we have the diameter, we also know the circumference of this circle that we got here. Now what happens if we were to cut along this line on the cylinder and we are going to unwrap it? Hey, that's just a plain old rectangle. Rectangles, easy to compute areas. So what's the first idea here? We are going to take a look at the area of this rectangle. What do we know about this rectangle? Well, this side length right here on the cylinder is going to be the width of our drum. Now the other thing that we know is, well, the side length that we are going to get here on the shorter one is going to be in fact our circumference of the circle. Let's call it C. Meaning the area of our cylinder, so the outer area, which is this rectangle right here, is the same as the circumference times the width of the drum. Or in other words, pi times the diameter times the width of the drum. Okay, perfect. So we got rid of that one. So that's the first idea here. Now, I gave as a hint that we are dealing with some kind of toilet paper or you could say. It's the same concept on the drum sander. Now what is going to happen if we take a look at the band? If we were to cut this thing up and we are going to cut it up, we are going to cut it up. Hey, isn't that a plain old fuck off? <laughs> isn't that a plain old parallelogram? Yes, it indeed is. And do you know what the cool thing about this parallelogram is? It has the same area as obviously our same cylinder cut up in a different way. So we also have information about a different thing, namely this parallelogram here, which is going to have the same area A overall. Now we just need to take a look at 
all the side lengths of this parallelogram and then we are going to do some elementary geometry, cutting things up and gluing things together to get our the area. Now, if we take a look at the cylinder here, once again, we get this circumference right here. Okay, you, you see that? If we were to cut this thing up, it starts here at the tip and wraps around once and then the cycle is going to begin with the spiral. If we were to unroll it, oh, did you see that? Okay, let me repeat. We are going to roll everything out. Then it means that long diagonal side that we get right here is nothing other than our circumference once again. So that thing right here is the circumference. That is something that we have also given here. Okay, what else do we have? I mean, what we are interested in overall is the total length of this parallelogram because from here to there it's going to dictate how long our band must be. The belt of sandpaper. So this thing right here is L. But this L is basically um, cut up into two different parts. This is where the area part is going to come in. So we are going to have this part going from the tip, just the tip, to this um, not so tippy tip right here. So this not so sharp corner up here. We are going to call this first part, I don't give a shit, S. And this small part down here, which is going to connect just um, the rest here with the tip over here, we are going to call this length T. So meaning overall, our L, our total length, is going to be comprised of S plus T. This is what we are really interested in, S plus T. But we also need to find out what the area of this thing is. So if we were to cut up the, the parallelogram like we did just here in an elementary geometry kind of way, then what we can do is we can take this triangle that we have here and just put it over here, resulting in a parallelogram um, which is going to be just like this. This parallelogram is called a rectangle, by the way. And we know how to compute areas of rectangles. It's very easy. It's just this side length that we get right here. We just now gave it a name. This is S. Multiplied with um, the height that we get here. So this right here um, is a height that we put into the parallelogram. What is this height exactly? If we take a look at it here. Well, this is just the width of our paper. This is one of the variables that we're given. We know the width of this certain kind of paper. It could be any width actually. I've used different ones, but in my case it's 75 millimeters. So meaning we get the width of our paper here, meaning the area overall of this parallelogram is the same area as this one and in this case it's S times the width of our paper. Meaning if we were to set those two areas equal, we can actually solve for S, which is one of the parts which comes up in our total length. Meaning, oh by the way, we got ghost blackboard once again. I have no idea how to fix it, seriously. I just don't know. Both areas put together is going to result in pa times the diameter times the width of our drum is hence equal to S times the width of our paper. And solving for S is a very trivial matter by dividing both sides by the width of the paper. Um, width of the paper is non-zero, so we can divide by it obviously. Meaning S, one part of the total length, is going to be equal to pa times the diameter times the width of the drum divided by the width of the paper. So that's one part of the story, but we need to find out our total length. What we could in theory do, obviously, is we could just take the whole belt, um, just an arbitrary length. Then what we could do is we could use our ruler or whatever, just put it at part of the belt. Then we are going to measure out the circumference, okay, which is part times 127 millimeters. We can just slide it upwards and then we can make a cut here. And from this point onwards, we can measure, okay, we just need the distance S, which we can compute by this formula that we have up here. And from this tip down here, we can once again measure the circumference down here and just make another cut. But we want to save our material, so we don't want to do arbitrary stuff. What we want to do is we want to make it rather precise. Meaning we want to find out how to cut the whole thing at first such that we get our length L and then we can cut it up into a parallelogram. So what we need to compute now is this length T that we have right here. And this is just part of this triangle here. That's the right triangle. So let us enhance the triangle a little bit. 
This right here is the right triangle, this is T, this is the width of our paper and this right here is our circumference. Meaning if we were to solve for T using Papa Pythagoras, we are going to get that T is nothing other than the square root of um, C squared, which is the hypotenuse. <laughs> By coincidence, C squared, seriously, hy hypotenuse C due to circumference minus um, WP squared. Meaning we can plug um, our definition for the circumference in, which is going to be the square root of pi squared times um, D squared minus WP squared. So overall, we can measure our length in the sense that is S plus T, which is nothing other than pi times D times the width of the drum divided by the width of the paper plus the square root of pi squared times d squared minus wp squared. And this right here is a generalized formula which is going to work for all drum senders, toilet paper rolls and so on out there on the internet and the world wide world. <laughs> so yeah, this right here is, is, is a formula, this is cool, right? Were you able to figure it out? I think that's a very cool little problem. And I for myself needed this visualization before even getting started with the problem. I um, needed this to get it done. So yeah, this was a huge help um, figuring the whole thing out the first time around. And if we were to plug our variables in, we are going to get those values for the circumference and also for our s which is also very important i'm going to use this for measuring and for the length l and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take the whole belt and just cut it right at the length and then we can go ahead and get started turning it into a parallelogram so let's go over to the wood shop and let's figure this last thing out shall we i hope you enjoyed this part in here and i hope the lighting and everything was rather okay we figure everything out once after another Let's go. So those were some pretty fun calculations. Let us now see if our measurements were correct. So what we need is um, we need a slope here, which is 39 centimeters in length. So I need to get my band measure 39 centimeters. And now I can start marking this one, it's applied mathematics, so yeah, just take something and try to get it done, so 39. Okay, so this is 39 centimeters. What we now need is the distance starting from here to the point up here, which is on the other side, must be um, 2160 millimeters or two meters and 16 centimeters in total. So let us measure this one out. And the last thing we need is a distance once again of 39 centimeters from here to there. And with that we are done. We can plug it into, into the machine. I gotta get rid of those tips here because they are usually um, just getting stuck in the machine. We don't have enough space for those tips in the machine. And now we can try to put it in. Let's give it our best, shall we? Let's see if it works out. All right, moment of truth. So we always start on the left hand side because this is the one which is not going to put more pressure onto the whole thing. So that seems to be working out at the start and perfect, nice. See, it connects perfectly with, without stretching it to the left or right. We are just going to let the slope follow the outer part of the cylinder and it's gonna fit perfectly with the rest. So this is already a good sign. Now we just need to get the length right by our calculations and then we are good to go and we can start the machine and I can show you how it actually works <laughs> and what it does. Okay, so we got a bit of um, overlap here which can happen 
um, because, well, my measurements aren't perfect. You know, the, the thing with bent measures and the like is that each and every one I have in my shop is different. A centimeter is not a centimeter on those. It's just outright terrible. So if I just have a small deviation in there, it's gonna freak up the whole process. But overall, our calculations were correct because it would go into here and then it's it's just nice. It just works out. So the last thing I need to do, this is what just happens with applied things, engineering, woodworking. They don't usually work out mathematically perfectly in an environment like that because your measuring tools are just not perfect perfect overall. This is why I haven't used my bend measure to measure the diameter and the like because this just wouldn't be a good idea. This is why I was using the specs to get the numbers right at least. And now I can do some trial and error, get rid of this part um, on the outside here and then we are good to go. So let me cut it to size and then we are done putting it in. And there we go. It's, it's in. It's in. That's what she said. Let's give it a bit more tension. And now we are good to go. We can try it out. So that worked. Nice. You're good, my boys. You're good. We are good. We're doing some good stuff over here. We are engineers. Whoop. Wicked, wick, wick. Let's send something. So drum sender, what does it do? It takes a rough board in for example, and sends the top off and gives you a smooth surface. This is what it does. I think it's pretty easy to see the difference here, right? <laughs> it's, it's just a nice machine. Nice service, rough surface. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you are like me and you are starting to enjoy a bit of applied mathematics and engineering, sounds really hard to say, then the contents of today's sponsor brilliant might actually be the perfect fit for you. Now, don't you think that this sponsor transition was pretty damn smooth? Just like the surface of this part of the board right here. Um, speaking of smooth, do you know that there do exist things that are called smooth functions? Has something to do with differentiability of a function. Um, it's a whole branch of analysis, talking about smooth functions and exploring what they are made up of, what their properties are and the like. And maybe you are like many other people and haven't heard of the term smooth before or maybe the term analytic or whatnot. Many things that I have talked about here on this channel. Maybe you're not familiar with those yet. Then why not try it brilliant? You can go over to their analysis and calculus courses and dive into these topics very slowly, starting off with a few definitions here and there and getting gradually harder in their courses over time, giving you a better understanding of the topics at hand and giving you just a great overview of the, core, um, of, of the core concepts that you might want to learn to get better in your studies. And the greatest thing about Brilliant is that all of their courses are backed by those great visuals. Their interactive learning concept is a one of a kind on the internet and I do highly enjoy it. I'm a regular over on Brilliant. I'm there each and every week trying out their new courses and going through courses that I already did just to brush up on some old topics or for demonstration purposes in my class. I mention this every time but it's great to use the geometry course in sixth grade geometry to show them properties of triangles, how the interior angles perform 180 degrees in their sum and so on and so forth. And maybe it's also something for you. Maybe you are one of the people who just love to learn by taking a look at visuals, trying to understand Lipschitz continuous functions because you normally wouldn't um, if you just get a definition lying there on the table. Maybe you need some kind of visuals or graphics that go along with that. And if that is the case, then Brilliant is most definitely something that you should check out. And you can actually try it out for 30 days for completely free. The whole world of Brilliant. By using my link down there at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash 30 day free trial. Or if you choose to 
use the link completely like clicky clicky linky linky then you're going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription if this really sparked your interest now. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. Click the link down there. It's supporting the channel so much. And other than that, I thank us for watching. Um, I hope you did enjoy this little challenge and I hope you were able to figure it out. And yeah, I'll the next video. I wish you guys a flamber day. And if you want to see more woodworking, if this right here made you really fucking horny, if this um, floated your boat, how daddy played with his wood. Oak doesn't taste good. There are better tasting wood types. Then um, you should also subscribe to Flemish Wood. That was a weird ending to the show, but I just love to smell and taste wood. Yeah, don't fucking judge me. Whatever floats your boat, mate. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Link to Flemish Wood down in the description. See ya!